All right, about three minutes in, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, how's everybody doing? My name is Aaron Orsino, and I am the program manager for um, Seed Network and kind of the main point person that you're gonna be asking questions to as we go through this uh, grant process. So our agenda for today is we're gonna do a little intro. Then I'm gonna talk about how high level, how our program works. I'm gonna give you some samples of some matches between B2B service providers and business owners, such as yourselves. And then we're gonna walk through an actual application um, complete with what a project plan looks like. And we're gonna go through the type form application completely so y'all can see what it looks like. And then we can go ahead and ask questions at the end. Right on. <clears throat> so I'm Aaron Ursino, Program Manager at Cultivate. I'm also involved as uh, with the Chamber of Commerce as the Vice President. And I also work um, full-time as a Design Program Manager at Meta. I've been with Undiscovered Night Market since day one, um, season one at the Mint, and have um, just really been blown away by the work that Cultivate Labs has been able to do. And um, that's why I'm here and um, super committed to helping BIPOC business owners, as well as helping to build our thriving commercial and cultural district in Soma, Filipinas. So what we have here are some examples of Seed Network alumni. Um, Francis Ang has a spot called Abaca, which is getting really crazy reviews right now. It's in um, Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco. Um, you should definitely check it out. It's modern Filipino cuisine, but he went through our program. Chef Reina, uh, the vegan queen, you see her face on Bart's now and she's getting shout out from uh, the homeboy, Spider-Man's best friend. <laughs> she like sent him a meal kit and they um, have a dialogue going. Um, Ox and Tiger, getting a lot of press recently. Um, our staple senior CSIG, plenty of uh, the iconic food trucks um, floating around San Francisco. Archipelago Books, one of the largest Filipino bookstores in the nation. Um, we read their branding and then Malaya Botanicals, um, which was the first CBD um, health and wellness brand to be featured at both uh, Lightning in the Bottle, no, um, Rocket, the one that's in Napa, I forget. Rock Bottle Rock. Thanks, man. Rock the <laughs> Bottle or something like that. <laughs> yeah, Bottle Rock, <clears throat> um, as well as um, Outside Lands. So props to them. So I'm going to give a high level explanation of how Seed Network works and our granting system. So the idea is that we'd like to keep money within our ecosystem. So Seed Network grants are open to BIPOC business owners from all across the Bay Area. Um, and the way that it works is that we pair a B2B service provider with a business owner and then pay for those services. So an example of a B2B service provider would be something like public relations, uh, legal and incorporation, product photography, e-commerce, branding, um, business coaching, mindset coaching, event production, things of that nature. So what we will do is, uh, let me let this person in. <clears throat> the way it works is that um, we help you to connect and identify what your problems are and then connect with a B2B service provider. After connecting with a B2B service provider and identifying your problems, uh, you two will work together, to develop a project plan. And don't worry, we've outlined all the steps and provided you an example project plan as well. And once you have that project plan ready, you'll hop into type form to our grant application. And it's a short 26 questions um, me and Desi actually go through a lot of grants. Desi's our executive director at Cultivate Labs. We go through a lot of grants and we know how painful it is. So we try to make this process as straightforward and painless as possible. Um, so after submitting that, uh, and I'll kind of go over it a little bit later, but um, it'll be evaluated by a panel of BIPOC business leaders, and then we'll make announcements on the 28th. And don't worry, we'll look at the timelines in just a bit. So here's one example of a, a potential match. So starting from left to right, um, oh, this is kind of like the high level. This is just what I talked about. So Wells Fargo, right now the Wells, money's coming from Wells Fargo. We pay for services like marketing, legal, branding, e-commerce, social media, photography, public relations, and then any BIPOC owned business is eligible for the grant. And in this season, which is winter, so 
um, January, February, March, we're going to be giving out two grants and then two grants in spring and then two grants in summer. So to go over an example, say, for example, you're a business owner <clears throat> and you've created a series of webinar art classes. So you connect with an online marketer from which you hired to increase reach and awareness. So this would be your B2B service provider. And you can kind of think of them as a consultant. Then as a result of this work that you did together, you receive 100 new enrollments in your program this month. Another example is you run a successful cupcake, cupcake company. And Mariah, I saw you hop in, so what up? <laughs> but you're looking for a stronger brand identity. You partner with a design agency to create a new logo and packaging. And you get noticed and land a distribution deal with a local market chain. All right, so this is what the timelines look like. So uh, we're around here. Actually, we are um, right about here. So me and Desi are still working on the development plans. For those who have gone through interviews, what up, Mark? Um, still working on yours. And even though you didn't, in the case that you didn't have a chance to interview with Desi and I, you're still eligible for the grant. And hopefully this information from this webinar will um, still assist you to do so. So today is the webinar right here. And then grant applications are, are open technically yesterday, but we'll be distributing the link in, in a summary email to everybody that attended this webinar after this. So you'll have two weeks to work on the grant. And at any time you can reach out via email to ask questions. <clears throat> at that point, it'll go into application review where a team of BIPOC judges um, from various chambers of commerce and also other business leaders within the Bay Area will review the different submissions. And then after that, we'll announce the two grant recipients for winter on March 7th, 2022, the day after my birthday. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pause there and see if there's any questions before we go into the sample application process. Uh, right now, yes, the recording will be sent out afterwards. Uh, we're gonna upload it to YouTube and then send it up. I did not consent to that. <laughs> Check the box, bro. All right, so now we're gonna go into a sample application process. So to make it easier, we created a type form application. And then in addition, you'll also be sent this a uh, sample project plan that uh, ideally you will work with your B2B service provider who should be well-versed in uh, doing this kind of thing since they do provide the service that they'll be helping you with um, as their business, they'll be very well equipped to help you with this plan. All right, so we're gonna send this out to you, but uh, until we get to question 16, I'm just gonna fill out dummy information in the application. So this is Typeform. And I'm just going to say Aaron Inc. <clears throat> Aaron, my last name, Orsino. Email address Aaron at Cultivate Labs. In case you have any questions, you'll also have that information. Um, Francisco. All basic stuff. All right, so at number nine, this is uh, a point where we're gonna ask some demographic question about your business. And this is to report back to the um, grant, uh, the grant tours, the, the folks that give us the grants. And also it helps us to identify your business for any special programs that it might be eligible for from the government, for example, like OEWD in the city. So this information will be kept uh, completely confidential, uh, but the question is, what is the annual revenue for your business? Um, what is your personal income? And uh, let me go back one. So this annual revenue is actually separate from your personal income, so just make sure you note that. And we tried to include kind of um, subtitles or instructions here for anything that might be confusing. Personal income, just say that. 
what is the main age of the applicant. And then after that, you can uh, input your ethnicity information. And again, this is for city tracking. Gender, um, you can choose what you'd like to input here. <clears throat> and then at this point, this is where we are going to refer back to our sample project plan because this uh, talks about your business as well as um, the business plan for the project that you're hoping to get funded. So I'm gonna make this a little bigger so we can read it. But in this case, our, our sample business is B plus notebooks. They sell handmade planners and other memo pads using the highest quality materials. We use Egyptian cotton, Corinthian leather for the covers and titanium metal for the spiral bounds. Each notebook takes over one month to make by hand. We individually number each notebook because they are a one of a kind art creation. No one notebook is the same as the next. And this is a good example, a good answer because the applicant paints a clear picture of what they sell and why it's special. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste the answer here, move on to the next one. So after that question um, where you explain what your business does, we're gonna start gathering information about the B2B service provider. So what is the name of the business, part, business you will partner with? Number seven, and then we got A plus design. Describe the project that you would like to get funded that will help grow your business. So type out in your own words what this grant will pay for. Be as descriptive as possible. Make a case for how this will be a game changer for your business. Short answers might be might dissuade the judging panel. So just so to say, um, is there a question? So as to say, just try to be thorough and um, provide a clear explanation. <clears throat> so here's the answer that we came up with. Currently, my website uses photos of my product that I took with my iPhone. Since I'm not a professional photographer, the lighting is sometimes different from photo to photo. My amateur photos cheapen the look of my high-end product. I would like for the C grant to pay for product photography from A Plus Design. They have a deep portfolio of creating amazing product photography. And this is a good answer because the applicant clearly describes the product his company is facing, uh, which is poor presentation of the product. They also point out that the proposed partner for this grant has already demonstrated expertise to help them solve this problem. So let us just go ahead and drop that in. Have you connected with the B2B service provider to discuss the project plan? So we do ask that you connect with your B2B service provider before filling out the application. And this is just to save you time as well, because um, and it, when you see here that it kind of ends the uh, application there. <laughs> I wish I didn't hit submit. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> the reason being, because we want to make sure that there's a clear project plan and that you've uh, connected with your B2B service provider first. So um, for the sake of simplicity, since I do have all the same questions here, you're gonna have to visualize what a type form looks like, but we're just gonna go through the answers using this document, uh, sample document. So next up is what is the address of the B2B business? What is the website? What is the phone number? <clears throat> and then does this business owner of the company you want to partner with identify with any of the following? And you can't see it here, but we, what we did have listed were specific business designations that the city um, can kind of categorize your business as. And these are special designations that give you um, sometimes uh, favored treatment with the city. So things like uh, minority owned, women owned, LGBTQIA owned, and uh, veterans. So next we'll review the project plan to help your business that you have developed with your B2B business service provider. So the first, so this, all this now deals with the project plan that you worked on with your B2B service provider. So what kind of results, so return on investment, are you expecting to get and how will you measure the results? So we include an example here um, and I'll just go ahead and read it to y'all. And what we're hoping for is clear expectations around how 
this uh, $4,000 grant and these service, services rendered will help your business and your bottom line. So I'll go ahead and read it to y'all. By hiring this photography agency to improve my product photography, I hope to increase my online sales. Currently, I sell about $50,000 worth of product a year. Similar products sell $500,000 a year. I believe that by improving my product photography, I can grow my sales close to what my competitors make too, um, which is at least $100,000. I can measure the ROI, return on investment of product photography by analyzing my web an website analytics. <clears throat> Since I have a baseline average for sales, any increase made by can be attributed to the improved product photography I received. I can also look to see the bounce rate and page view time for my website to correlate improved focus on my product. For example, I currently have a bounce rate of 80% on my website. Um, that means that if somebody views your page and then leaves without taking an action, that's the bounce rate. On my website, and users spend an average of four seconds on my product pages. If my bounce rate decreases, and if the average time on page increases, I will know that the product photography has done its job attracting the attention of my website visitors. So clear example of the return on investment from the work. And this is a good answer because the applicant gives us comparables to understand what the industry leverage should be, industry average, I should say. The applicant also gives us a baseline number where they want to see results. More importantly, the applicant identifies their data points other than sales that can help prove that the product photography is improving their business performance. Okay, so just two more questions, almost done. So what is the schedule for the project? What are the major deliverables for the project? And when are these deliverables due? So your B2B service provider should really provide most of the guidance for this. Um, but we, what we have here is a sample six week plan. In week one, they meet for a consultation, um, decide which products need to be pho photographed. Week two, they do a first photo shoot. And week three, they do a second photo shoot. Uh, week four, they return the photos from the first photo shoot and give feedback. In week five, they return the photos from the second photo shoot and give feedback. Then on week six, the final product photos are delivered and the engagement with your B2B service provider is complete. So um, actually there's a few more questions, <laughs> just kidding. So number 26, how long will it take for you to complete your project? How many weeks in an ideal situation? In this case, it was six weeks. And then how long will it see, take to see results and report the ROI of your project? So these are probably the most complex things that you'll have to think through, um, but the example here is I will see immediate results. I typically average around 100 visits to my site per day. So after about four weeks of analyzing web traffic, I will have approximately 2,800 visits to my site, giving me a decent sample size to compare the before and after results. And this is a good answer because the applicant gives us a clear picture of when they will see the results while also showing after a period of time um, that they have collected enough data to rule out any anomalies that would skew their results. So number 28, what are the major hurdles or problems that you might encounter and how will you deal with these problems? So an example here is we have a lot of products and it may be challenging to get all of the photo shoot photos in one photo shoot. And we can adjust for this by planning to do two photo shoots. So think with your service provider about how things can go wrong but we'd also like for you to think on the front end, how can you address those things that might go wrong so that if they do happen, uh, you'll already have a solution in mind. Number 29, what work needs to be done before the project starts? Is there any information that needs to be gathered? <clears throat> and the answer that we came up with was, we'll create a shot list of all the products and what shots will be taken of each of those products. Number 30, how often will you be, meet with your B2B service provider and at what cadence? So um, an example is every week, every other week, or twice a week. Um, but I will meet with my design agency once a week until the project is completed. Then who will be involved in those meetings? And this is important to kind of determine on your end. Uh, sometimes there are kind of tricky situations where it's unclear who the decision maker is or the final decision maker. Uh, which can lead to a project really going off the rails. So it's important to get really clear about that, um, both from your team and also from the team of the 
business consultant or B2B service provider. <clears throat> so in this case, um, we have a husband and wife couple. One is an owner, uh, the, the husband's the one of the owners, the wife is the creative director. And then at the design agency, we've got an account manager, a photographer and a creative director who will be involved in the meetings every week. All right, so that was a mouthful. I'm gonna drink some water now. But at this point, um, I'm gonna put the dates up on the screen and open it up to open Q&A. And I, I see some uh, comments here. Shout out to the Orbifolia background. Nurture State, I see you. Um, we got a question from Angela. If we are granted a grant, do we have a choice of who we partner with to help us? I.e., I already know a graphic designer. The answer is absolutely, you can choose someone that you know uh, to be your partner, your B2B service provider. All they would have to do is enroll as a um, B2B service provider on our website, seednetwork.biz, hit join, and then have them uh, register as a B2B service provider, at which point they would be eligible uh, to be paired with you for the grant. And the floor is open for questions. Hey, Aaron, it's Rowena. Hi. Hi. Oh, my question is, um, so I think I got a little confused in the beginning. So do you, do you select whoever's getting the grant and then they'll choose who to partner up with? Well, because I think you mentioned earlier, we have to let you guys know who we're partnering up with prior, right? For the, for the applications or? I think that's where I got confused. For sure. Um, it's definitely helpful. Just to clarify, we would like for you to kind of identify your B2B service provider before you apply for the grant, because as part of the application process, you need to develop a project plan with them. Um, so that's kind of the, the steps of how that looks. Does that answer the question? Yeah. Oh, so when we choose the B2B partners, that's free, right? Like we, do we like just connect with them through like a link or how do we do that? For sure. Um, so if you are using somebody that's already in the network, then you would go to our website and then we have a business directory. And then there's a B2B catalog of different B2B service providers that you can browse. And then from here, um, it will have their website information so that you would be able to uh, connect with them, uh, visit their Instagram, just so that you can DM them. But if, you were, if you're looking to browse somebody from the catalog, then go to the website and browse the BB catalog. But if you had somebody else in mind, then um, you'd want them to apply. But if you do have any questions on how to connect with that person, then I can always um, help you out one-on-one -on -one as well. Okay, clear. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Wait another minute. So how did you guys get the grant from uh, Wells Fargo? That's really cool. Yeah, so a lot of large organizations and corporations, they have uh, these teams that are called corporate responsibility, um, kind of like community engagement. And um, fortunately, Cultivate Labs and Undiscovered, Couple Gardens, Seed Network, we have a pretty good tra track record of um, using grant money and um, producing results. So um, Desi was able to create a partnership in which uh, every year we get some grant money to to redistribute to, to local business owners. Nice. Jimmy, how are you? I'm good, Aaron. How's it going? <laughs> Pretty good, man. Turn your cameras on. 
All right, I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, so that was the question and answer phase. As a next step, if you need help identifying a B2B service provider, just go ahead and shoot me an email. Um, otherwise, we're gonna be sending out all the relevant links tomorrow, which will include the link to the application, the link to our website to um, provide a B2B service provider, uh, a way to register, a link to that sample um, application project plan template, as well as a link to this recording. I have another question, sorry. Mm -hmm. For the interview, I got scheduled for an interview call. Um, what are the questions? Is it kind of similar to whatever the applications questions are? <clears throat> yeah, so for the interview call, that's it's not necessary to apply for the grant, but it's that, that you did register is great. Um, we're gonna create an individual development plan for your business that is independent of uh, the grant application as well. But the questions for that look kind of like, it's pretty similar. Yeah, but it's a lot, it's actually simpler. So um, it's nothing major, but things like, do you have partner, a business partner when you start your business? Do you use any of these services? What's your greatest opportunity? What are your challenges? And where do you get most of your customers? So things like this. Full disclosure, this is this is the questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it kind of looks like this because it is this. Mariah, you gonna unmute? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys. Hi Erin. Um, do we have to be in the Bay Area to qualify for the grant? Because I'm in Stockton. Um, yes, the Bay Area and is Stockton not the Bay Area? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's I think it's technically outside, so it has to be the Bay Area. Oh, okay, cool. I, I would still like to see the resources on like the grant writing templates because I'm like interested in writing grants in general and I know it can be an overwhelming process and everything. So thank you. <laughs> sure. um, we'll help you out with that. Okay, everyone, I hope this was educational and, and value adding. Um, if you have any questions, shoot me an email. Let me put my email on the screen again. But well, you should be getting something tomorrow. Uh, well, it's Aaron at cultivatelabs.org. And uh, I'll share my screen again, but um, it's all over the website as well. So never mind. Um, Aaron at Cultivate Labs, and I'll type it in the chat. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you. Thanks for the info. Thank you so much, Aaron. You're welcome. See you later. Bye.